All right, what's going on, guys? Trev back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Game of Thrones video after that crazy finale last weekend. In this one, we're going to give our thoughts on whether or not we think HBO should do a Game of Thrones sequel. Okay, impossible spoiler warning if you have not seen Game of Thrones in its entirety at this point now that it's over. So, continuing along with the Game of Thrones videos, uh, just kind of playing it by ear, seeing what you guys want to do. Uh, I know that, you know, it's kind of, it's very mixed. I've actually never in my life, I've been doing this on YouTube now for 10 years, I've never seen in this first decade uh, such a controversial fan base right now. The fan base is sort of with Game of Thrones. You have a section that are totally jaded. They just want to light the whole thing on fire. They just want to burn it down because it's like, you know, they're really upset with how that finale went. They're so mad and they're so scorned by it, which I totally get that. I totally understand that. That they want nothing to do with the license at all anymore. And I I understand that. Uh, there's a section, I'd say, in the middle that are kind of like, you know, I'm looking forward to the prequels. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do in the future with the license. And then there's a section that still love Game of Thrones just as much as ever. And they actually maybe either like the finale or maybe they just thought it was like they expected to see a tragic type of tragedy story for Game of Thrones in the end. And that that would be the kind of story it was and that we would definitely not get a happy ending. And it would be kind of a Red Wedding-esque type of ending or tragedy for the the show. Uh, so, you know, you have a lot of people in different spots here. Some people, you know, they want to see uh, the channel here continue with some Game of Thrones videos here and there. Other people want to see it stop and, you know, I totally understand. I'm just kind of playing it by ear, doing what, you know, makes sense right now to do. And now that the series is over, if we get to the point where we don't want to discuss it anymore and we have nothing more to talk about, then, you know, we'll stop. Which eventually will happen anyway, one way or another. But uh, we'll have to see in the future uh, if we want to cover the prequels, if we want to discuss it. And I'll kind of do what you guys want as far as, you know, your feedback and what you're saying goes. You know, I'm going to listen to you guys and, and do what you think. So uh, keep commenting and, and let me know where you're at because it's just so different right now. And it's not that I'm ignoring anybody in particular. There's some people who, like I said, they want nothing to do with it. They don't even want to see these videos in their subscription feed. And then there's people who they're enjoying kind of, they're finding value in us discussing it and saying like how we feel about it because it was such a, a kind of traumatic and crazy ending for Game of Thrones that uh, that they kind of want to try to sort it out in their own minds still. And then there's others that actually just liked it and they, they'd like to continue you know, discussing it as much as possible. So let me know where each of you guys are at in particular. So the question for this one, should there be a Game of Thrones sequel series? So what we're saying here is we're not saying prequels, we're not saying this, but we're saying should they get everybody back together, do a Game of Thrones sequel type show, and um, you know basically continue on pretty much. So you finish the first series, the series is over, it's done, it's, it's, it's over, but different showrunners take where the story left off, give you some kind of a twist because there was no telling in the end and I didn't get the sense in the end of Game of Thrones that everything was going to be peaceful now you know forever like it was going to be that happy ending where uh, that's not the sense that I got watching it I didn't get the sense that you know John and Daenerys were su were successful they took the crown and everybody loved them and uh, they were liberators and everything was great it was a peaceful story and the violence would stop and war would stop and there would be no drama and everything would just be happy going forward I did not get that sense with Bran I almost got the sense with Bran that he came all the way down there. He had this ego about it that he was kind of this hidden sort of villain there who allowed these events to take place and kind of knew the future to a degree and did not get involved. And we've done videos on all of that. Some people like these ideas. Some people don't. But, you know, the ending is very gray, as they've said in interviews. And I kind of would say that I lean more towards the opposite. That's like, you know, it feels like after that finale that, that peace is like with him is kind of like, I don't know because I'm not sure. I just, you know, I'm less certain of the the realm being in peace now uh than than i was if you'd have done the happy ending option for example so i think also the other part to this is that the finale episode for game of thrones did about 19 million viewers uh on a subscribed service that is unbelievable it's really crazy to think that hbo is going to let that go you know they're going to say okay we're not going to touch this anymore it's over and we're going to do we're going to do prequel series that have none of the same characters in it. Maybe family names, house names, 
you know, uh, uh, characters like maybe maybe the Night King will sort of be in it in his human form. We'll have to see what they end up finishing for some of those prequel series. But no, so far as we know, they're not doing a sequel for Arya in her travels. They're not doing a sequel for what happens after. And with that much interest in the finale of 19 million people watching it, it's and, and the way the ending was received, I think it is insane for HBO not to do a sequel. I think it's insane. I mean, it's like it's like you know, just blow your head off insane. Like it's like, dude, you have the most the hottest episode in scripted television history. And the hottest season in scripted television history in terms of subscribe numbers. And you're not going to do a sequel for that? Are you insane? (laughs) You know, forget D&D. Let them go to Star Wars. Let them go do whatever they're going to do. Somebody take over and, you know, do a sequel series right after. Have And there's some ideas here. People say, well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does. It's so easy. Listen to Blockbuster 2008 here. He says... um, Granted, his name is Blockbuster, so <laughs> he's he's over too, right? Uh, Drogon, okay, sequel movie. Here's his idea. He said, this is easy, right? This is so easy, it's painful. Drogon takes Daenerys' body to Volantis, where uh, she is resurrected by uh, Kinvara. She vows to fly Drogon to King's Landing to get her revenge on Tyrion and Jon Snow and boot Bran off of the throne. Sam and Tyrion have read uh, Grandmaster uh, Ebro's history of Westeros. Sam has read the histories and scrolls uh, at Castle Black and listened to Mace- Maester Aemon uh, stories for years. Tyrion has heard Bran's stories uh, from Bran himself. Together, Sam and Tyrion piece together the history of the Three-Eyed Raven. They put their heads together and discover Bran is really Blood Raven. So he gets into some more kind of further things here, but let's just look at the, the overall kind of uh, idea here of what he's going with. So you do a sequel. You have you bring Daenerys back to life. Now she can be you could actually bring her back either way you want. You could bring her back as a straight villain where she just wants to burn everything down to the ground now because after John betraying her, she wants revenge and she wants to just kill everybody. So she's a hardcore villain in that way. Or you could bring her in as a um, maybe as someone who gets so so much sympathy. You brought you brought John back to life after he was killed, right? With uh, with uh, uh, Melisandre, you could do something like that. Uh, with with Daenerys and have her maybe take on uh, Bran and you could actually get her sympathy. You could actually bring her back as maybe a, as maybe a liberator type of uh, hero type character because after being you know she'll get so much sympathy after she was killed in such a way. But granted, she had done some things before. So uh, there's a lot of different ways you could go with this. You could bring in some of the uh, you know uh, you could bring Bran in as kind of a as you could make you could turn him into a villain basically is what you could do and you could have it be that the events and the things that took place were actually things that he knew was going to happen given the circumstances and he allowed it to happen anyway and for a million people to die and for all these things to happen because he just selfishly wanted to sit on the throne which you kind of get that you kind of almost get that feel at the end from his body language you know because of the way the actor plays Bran where he just sits there he's just so smug and why do you think I came all this way right all this stuff is like he almost comes across to me as a villain already in the way I look at the finale and like, like, wait, so you do want to be on the throne? You came here willingly and this whole thing. It's not like he denied it. It's not like he turned it down. It's like he just goes right into it. Now, is that because he wants to maintain peace? But, you know, all this stuff has already happened. So there's some great ideas here for how you could do a Game of Thrones sequel. Uh, but either way, I think you have to take Bran and make him not what people thought he would be. The people who chose him, Tyrion and the others, uh, like his idea here of making him Blood Raven, you have to basically make Bran not this peace type of character. You have to you have to make him, I guess, a, a villain in some way, and then maybe John realizes somehow, like, you know, maybe Tormund could have a conversation with him and just say something stupid like, well, if, if Bran, you know, knows all the history and he can see things and he knows things... Wouldn't he have known that this would happen with Daenerys if you had told and he let you do it anyway? And then maybe John's eyes can open up and kind of figure out, like, you know, maybe he could have stopped this and he didn't. What does that make Bran at that point then? And, and why, why are you allowing him to rule the realm? You could see him easily becoming a villain uh, for, for the fans and, uh, you know, and for things. And if it just doesn't turn out to be what they thought it is... Uh, you could even do maybe a, a blue eye flash with him and that the touch from the Night King somehow affected him and kind of turned him slowly so that he's slowly becoming. And so he's trying to maneuver events to sort of to kill off as many people as possible, right? Something like this to where he, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could go with it. But 
Um, you know, I did not get the sense in the finale of the series that he was like this peace going, you know, uh, hero type character. I just didn't get that sense from Bran at all. So I think it'd be so easy to do a sequel series for Game of Thrones that they absolutely should think to themselves, why are we not doing this? You know, even if it takes them a few years to get everybody back together and you got to pay them big money and you got to do it again. You know, fans, I think fans are just just distraught from where they were left at the end of the series, and that's what I'm seeing in the feedback. And it's just like, you know, the fans, from what I'm hearing, the fans want it. Uh, they want. They don't want to see that be the last minute for the series. And I don't know, uh, contractually, maybe they can't. Maybe that's part of it, too. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, I just sit here and think, like, there is so much interest there for fans, and there is so there are so many people that want to see something else after what they saw uh, in that finale that I think it's crazy for HBO not to do some kind of a sequel, even if it's The Adventures of Arya or something. I don't know. Uh, it's just got money all over it. It's like, you guys are just going to let that go? You're going to do prequels? Prequels are fine, but you're just going to let that go? Really? You're going to leave that? <laughs> it's like, okay, fine. You know, I don't work for HBO, but I mean, you know, if I did, I'd be writing letters to everybody you can think of to try to get them to realize, like, why are you not doing this it makes no sense you know what i mean in in with the way things ended up so we'll do some questions for for today for this video and you guys can certainly let me know do you want to see a sequel for game of thrones or are you satisfied with the ending and saying you know what i'm done with it for either positive or negative like are you saying i'm happy with the ending i don't need to see any more game of thrones if they do prequels fine i don't want to see a continuing story later or are you on the other side to say you know maybe it would cost a lot to get some of the cast and crew back together but HBO just did, you know, 20 million <laughs> subscriptions. Uh, I think they can afford to pay the actors whatever they want. Movie money, easy, every season or whatever, and it would probably work out just fine. Uh, and then they could do a, uh, some kind of sequel series. But again, you don't have the, the books to go by, which they haven't had for a while. But, um, you know, you can do some interesting things with it. It's kind of crazy that they're just going to leave it like that. But that's my thought. Let me know what you guys think. Are you, are you, not, are you not on agreement here that you think, no, they should just leave it and, and that's it? That was fine for an ending. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, with that fan interest and that ending, you guys are crazy not to do something with it in terms of the future in a sequel series. It just doesn't feel like a peacetime type series. That doesn't feel like a peaceful ending to me. Feels like Bran selfishly took it because he wanted to and allowed all these things to happen, even though he knew they would. Um, Kevin Means says, still a fan and for sure going to check out the prequels. Uh, I read somewhere that HBO said that no current characters will be in any of the spinoffs. Uh, so, you know, any of the prequel series. It's very sad, right, for, for Kev. You know, I mean, it's, it's so weird to me that you would have, you know, if you're not going to do anything else with the series that that's where you would leave things off. The biggest advantage of having a, a, an ending like you did is that, you know, you could do more with it after, right? If it was a peaceful ending and Daenerys and Jon just rule and everyone's happy with it and everything's good and it does have a happy ending, then it makes sense that you don't do something after it. But because of the way things ended off, it's like, dude, this is an opportunity for you guys to do another series. And, you know, maybe it doesn't get 19 million subscription views every episode. But maybe you do 10 or you do 15 and people are happier with it and you kind of fix it to where fans are happier so that not just 20 or 30 percent are happy with the ending, but more like 70 or 80 percent are happy with it. And you make a lot of money and everyone gets work and fans are happier. I mean, I don't know. It, this it, It's like bizarre world that they wouldn't do. It's crazy that they would just leave this. You know, what I mean? it's like, it's like, dude, why would you? It just doesn't. It does, to me, it makes no sense. Norm 2014 says, I don't want prequels. I want a sequel for this finale, especially a sequel with John and Arya. That ending of John is so ambiguous. Yeah, man. Um, John is a warrior. For him to just, uh, what, what did, you know, uh, man, it's just like sending him there just to stay and just to live. It's like he's a warrior. He's meant to, he's meant to be fighting for the living. He's meant to be doing things. And uh, to leave it as is, man, it's really, it's really sad. Um, and again, you can pass. You can you can sympathize and bring him back as a hero by turning Bran villain. You turn Bran villain to make it so that he knew what was going to happen, and John is absolved of what he did. You know, because then it makes it look like Bran is this mastermind manipulator villain type, and so everything that happened after that, Daenerys and everything else. He knew that this was a possible... If you guys seen Avengers, right, and, and Doctor Strange, and they talk about the one chance they have out of however many, and that that's the way they have to go and they have to steer that way, you can do that with Bran. You can say that Bran did it the opposite. 
he there was a lot of different ways things could go and things could end peacefully and by allowing John to tell the others and by allowing them to find out and he knew that they would tell and that these would tell and that Daenerys would become paranoid people would turn on her and start doing this by allowing John to do that at that moment uh, he knew what was going to happen and he allowed and he said it's your choice but really he could have said wait a minute John don't do this if you do this if he was a good guy he would save a million people in King's Landing he would do all this stuff he said don't tell if you tell there's going to be over a million people die. Don't tell, right? And the fact that he didn't do it, he takes all the blame for everything because he was happy enough to tell, you know, Sansa about Littlefinger and what he had said with Eddard and everything. Um, you can easily redeem John by making Bran a villain. It's so easy. It's crazy, you know, in my opinion anyway. Um, so uh, Rogan Bite says, uh, no, I will burn my... So he's not a fan of Game of Thrones anymore. He's saying no. This was in the video yesterday that he's not a fan anymore. He's done with it. No, I will burn my Starks uh, t-shirt. Um, I have some shirts too, actually, for Game of Thrones, and I don't know how I feel about them now either. And uh, no interest in buying the next books. Gladly save my 40 bucks. Uh, I wouldn't have sought out uh, watching the prequels either. So he's he's one of, you know, again, you know, and, and not to single him out, he's, there's a high percentage of people just like that that they don't even want to see me do these videos anymore. So, you know, I get that too. And if they win, I'm going to just stop doing this and we'll just make Walking Dead videos and Stranger Things and other stuff. Because, you know, if that's how the fan base is really feeling as a whole, uh, then we got to move on. You know, I have to listen to you guys. I can't be keep making these videos if you guys are like, I hate this show now. I don't want to, I, I don't even want to think about it, right? And I get that too. Uh, Joe Hennessy says, uh, Trev, can you do videos on the major houses of Game of Thrones uh, and how they were started? So some kind of uh, folklore history, uh, you know, fictional history videos for Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones. Um, I am really not sure how I feel about that at this time especially. I mean, you know, those videos take a long time to make and uh, I'm just not sure how I feel about it right now to that kind of degree to do something like that. Also, there's another thing that I've seen a lot with Walking Dead. This is my experience from doing this online for a decade as well too. The TV show universe is a different universe than A Song of Ice and Fire. End of statement. It's a different universe. So when people, like for example, The Walking Dead is a different universe in the comics than the TV series. So when you say things like they're fact for Game of Thrones, the TV series, it's not, that's not true, right? That's true of A Song of Ice and Fire. These are different universes. A Song of Ice and Fire could have a totally different ending than the TV series. Maybe it'll have the same, ser maybe it'll have the same ending. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll be completely different, right? There's different characters in the comics, There's, or sorry, in the books. There's more uh, fleshed out characters. There's more point of view characters in the books. That are, the, the TV series is like a streamlined version, but it's not the same. And what George R. R. Martin might do in, the, in finishing up his story, it could be totally different to how things went in the TV series. So even though the houses and a lot of it is like it's close to, you know, almost the same, right, for most of the series, at the same time, they had to go a different route. They had to make things original for the TV series. So I view them as two independent universes. So when you do history like that, you're really doing history of A Song of Ice and Fire. You're not really doing that for the TV series because the TV series is more liquid. It could change, and they could change things they want to do with the prequels, and they could do different stuff. So it's not necessarily, you know, right to do that because the TV series is allowed to interpret things its own way. It doesn't have to stay the same as The Song of Ice and Fire. And it's even more kind of exciting when you don't know a lot of times. So it's, it's difficult to do that. You could do that for Song of Ice and Fire. Um, but I, have, I take issue with doing it for the TV series because, like I said, they are different universes. Um, and we should look at them as such. We shouldn't look at them as the same story because... You know, you don't know how Song of Ice and Fire will end, and I'd almost guarantee you it's going to have a lot of differences from the way the TV series ended. Maybe it'll be a better ending. Maybe it'll be, I don't know, the same or somewhat similar, but it won't be exactly the same no matter what. Uh, a couple more. Manny Chavez is still a fan, but watching for 10 years. Hated the finale, but still the best show ever. So some people are still saying, okay, you know what? We owe it to Game of Thrones. They made a misstep in the finale. A lot of people didn't like it, but you know what? They brought us all the other seasons before. They brought us all this stuff. So we have to kind of let that slide and give them a chance because, you know, they deserve to have a misstep here and there, uh, if that's the way you see it. If not, that's fine, too. It's up to you. It's, it's all, you know, whatever you guys think, right? Carol Van Leer with our last one says, A while back, George R. R. Martin said something to the effect of, put this in here on purpose, If you think this story will have a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. Oh. <laughs> Do you know how many times I have read this quote in the last two months? I have read this quote probably, it's in the hundreds now, probably, I don't know, 300 times or something. It is getting so frustrating. 
uh, to read this quote because it's like, okay, we know, we get it, okay, we get it. It was foreshadowed to have a, a tragedy type ending for the series. It was. Yes, I know, fine. Um, Ramsey and whatever. Okay, fine, no problem. But, you know, you have to think of it as something that could be greater than just one TV show. And it probably should be based on the numbers. It's crazy to make it just one show. It's crazy not to do more with it. I mean, you look at it, AMC is just beating the hell out of The Walking Dead. They're doing everything with Walking Dead they can think of. Like every idea is greenlit. Three series and a movie. Let's do it. Let's do it all. You know, and everyone always hates on it. It's like, okay, well, let's see how we feel about HBO in a couple years when they really don't do anything with a sequel in terms of that ending and they just leave that be the, the bad taste in everyone's mouth after it's all done. It's like, or a lot of people's mouths. That's crazy to see. Okay, this will be the last one. Freebie says, John should have been the king. Uh, Bran kept saying that he can't be king or the lord of anything. So what changed? And is he the third eye raven anymore? If so, why didn't they explain what exactly are his powers? Uh, and how long does he live, etc.? It's such an American ending to bring democracy to Westeros. Also, a lot of stuff just didn't make any sense. It's very true from Freebie that in the end, uh, there's a lot of things there that are very weird. Again, I, I compared Bran to Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen where he's supposed to not really be attached to an ego anymore. He's supposed to be disconnected. So he's not supposed to be active or to be in that kind of a forefront role. He's supposed to be kind of an advisor type of deal. He's not supposed to be an ego uh, a person like that. He's supposed to be dissolved of that. And that's the way I read it anyway. And again, they again see, they can do what they want, right? It's their story. It doesn't have to be the same as other things like a Song of Ice and Fire or whatever. They can kind of interpret it however they want to. But I agree with what you're saying 100%. It doesn't really make sense for him to kind of be king or be voted in in that way because he's supposed to be kind of an advisor type of character. You know what it feels like to me? It feels like they just wanted to go with someone at the end that almost no one would predict would be there, right? They didn't want to go with John because it's too predictable. They didn't want to go with Daenerys because it's too predictable. They tried to be more intelligent about it and try to go with somebody like, oh, they'll never guess it'll be this person. It's like, yeah, because it doesn't really make sense that it would be that person. And it doesn't make sense that that person would want to do it because they're supposed to have kind of dissolved their ego and kind of gone into that uh, togetherness type of uh, open consciousness type of idea, right? Instead of a central piece, they're supposed to kind of be expanded in that way. And uh, as a result, you can't really go back to, you know, me, I, this kind of idea when you're supposed to be one of these characters that has kind of gone out into the ether and kind of been sort of one of these, you know, he is our history. He's supposed to be our kind of grand uh, advisor type of thing and as such he's not supposed to be a physical person in that role making active changes day to day that when he makes that transition that to me sounds more like a villain because it, it shows that he's a bit disingenuous or he's not really hasn't been really you know truthful with anybody that he's kind of this idea of he's a three-eyed raven he's no one now he's not Bran anymore he's this other kind of entity uh, that's sort of taken over and kind of become more open I don't get that sense from him, and I don't think it works. I just I just don't think it works, you know, based on just all those things I just said. It just doesn't, for me, it doesn't work that well. So it makes more sense to make him a villain and do a sequel and do that. Anyway, you know, it probably won't happen, but, you know, it's what it is. It's out there. It's out there in the open. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. Would you want to see a Game of Thrones sequel, or are you happy with the way they've ended it off and it being prequels going forward? Let me know. That's it for this video. See you guys again soon for another. It's Trev. Same peace. Later, guys. See you soon.